G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday afternoon here in Australia and I thought I'd follow up with this story uh, that I was talking about USDC and there's talks that they've moved, uh, or not moved, moving to Stella. So here it is. USD, USDC, sorry, continues move away from Ethereum and heads to Stella. Now it's not just completely going to Stella though and I'll continue. USDC is a stablecoin handed by Circle and Coinbase. It was once only hosted on Ethereum, but no longer. The USDC stablecoin is heading to the Stellar blockchain network early next year. It will make the third blockchain network to support USDC after Ethereum and Algorand. So it did move to Algorand, as I said the other day. I couldn't remember exactly who it was, but yeah, it was Algorand. I was correct in thinking that. Up until recently, USDC was exclusive to Ethereum. USDC, the US dollar peg stablecoin managed by Circle and Coinbase, is coming to the Stellar blockchain, Circle announced. Circle will add USDC support to Stellar's vast array of products, among them payment tools, infrastructures, APIs and business account products by the first quarter of next year. That means that these businesses can soon, can soon start using the Stellarized version of USDC. So there we go, they are moving. And it's not just completely though. So they haven't even left Ethereum. They still have some uh, USDC on Ethereum, but they moved some to the Algorand chain and they've sort of moved some to the Stellar chain. So, I mean, that's really big news for both Stellar and uh, Algorand. You know, it shows some confidence uh, by this fairly large group. Coinbase is anything but small and, you know, their circle uh, partnership, obviously, uh, is pretty big as well. So, yeah, interesting. And I think from memory, the reason they moved is because Ethereum was so slow and so costly. Uh, and Tether and USDC were two of the biggest uh, reasons that Ethereum was slow. The stable coins is where the biggest use is. So the fact that they've moved some off of those uh, is good. That will bring down fees, uh, help the Ethereum network. Obviously, layer two sol scaling solutions were going to help with that as well. But, you know, USDC uh, and Tether, you know, they didn't want to wait around for that to happen forever. So it's kind of a win-win situation. So good for Stellar uh, and, you know, still kind of good for Ethereum as well because it makes uh, Ethereum more usable at the moment. But I guess long term, they would have liked to have kept it. But look, if the scaling two solutions come out on Ethereum and everything becomes, you know, unbelievably cheap to do any kind of transactions, then there's every chance that they'll migrate uh, right back to Ethereum. All right, the next big treasure, corporations buying up Bitcoin as a treasury or reserve. I've been saying for a while, ever since that micro strategy news came out, I think there is a number of institutions that are getting in and we'll go and look at the Bitcoin chart soon. But let's just continue with this for now. The entry of firms like Square, MicroStrategy and Ridgestone may open up the BTC floodgates and provide confidence for the rest to follow. That's what I believe has happened and is happening. It just takes somebody to do something. Like if something's never been done by anyone before, it can, you know, it can take a really long time for someone to finally do it. Then once one person does it, it's usually not too far away before a second person does it. And then the third person third person does it. And then all of a sudden, everybody's doing it. It's like, you know, man flying for the first time and all of that. We tried for a really, really long time. And then, you know, eventually somebody did it. And after that, the floodgates just kind of opened. And then everyone was, you know, flying via planes and things like that. I don't mean humans just flying, but you get the drift. And I think it's the same. Now that we've got bigger companies, and particularly MicroStrategy and Grayscale, the amount of money that they've put in, I think there's going to be a number of other institutions that are going to be getting in. And I believe it's happening right now. I, I believe the price is showing that. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So October is the time for surprise. On October 8, right on cue, mobile payments giant Square, which boasts a market cap of... 86.6 .6 billion announced that it had invested 50 million dollars in bitcoin five days later asset manager stone ridge holdings which manages over 10 billion in assets uh, disclosed that it had purchased more than 10,000 bitcoin worth around 114 million as part of its treasury reserve strategy 
strategy. They both followed MicroStrategy, a NASDAQ listed asset manager, which made uh, known last month that it had accumulated 425 million in Bitcoin, making BTC the principal holding in its treasury reserve strategy. I think MicroStrategy in years to come are going to be seen as absolute geniuses. Geniuses, they are going to be worth so much money. Yes, they're still going to ride the highs and the lows of Bitcoin, but in the long term, say five or ten years from now, when you know Bitcoin has kind of leveled out and got to its you know kind of somewhat stable price, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's about a million dollars of Bitcoin or you know half a million at least in sort of ten years time, and then I mean you know 425 million, and they were buying them at what is it about nine thousand? I think the average price was. 8,900 to 9,200 for micro strategy, if I remember correctly. You get $425 million, and you know, again, it was at around about 9 million. So times it by 10, that becomes a whole lot of money. God, what is that? 400 and. I don't know, what is it? God, I'm terrible with my maths. So I just throw a zero on that. $4,250 million, that's what that becomes. You know, your, your 10 exit. And that's, you know, only if it goes to 100000 Then if they go to a million dollars each, well, God, I can't even work that out. But that's a lot of money. I'm going to say that's probably into the trillions there. If not trillions, billions anyway. All right, so uh, three publicly owned companies, uh, th- uh, three publicly owned companies, three big companies, BTC purchases. It may be mere coincidence. On the other hand, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has ballooned by three trillion since the beginning of 2019, while the US dollar has depreciated by 70% against Bitcoin. So these are the reasons that Bitcoin is going to make it. I mean, it's been around for 10, you know, going on 11 years now. People who say it's going to die and go to zero, you know, there has to be a major fault uh, in the in the code and there just hasn't been you know if there was it would have been found by now that's why btc bitcoin is so slow at bringing out updates and things like that and i'm fine with that it needs to stay safe that's what makes it so valuable it's immutable it's safe you know it can't be hacked you know if they go too quickly in bringing out development for it and it's not stable and you know all of a sudden there becomes a bug that's what would really hurt it so we don't need bitcoin to be ultra fast it'd be good if it was faster and could scale better but you know they can work on that gradually over time its greatest asset is exactly that it's safe it's you know again it's it's immutable uh and it can't be deflated like it's you know there's they're not going to print it to uh a billion dollars it's got 21 million and that's it it's capped at it so really really uh interesting uh and again when we get to the btc price we'll have a look why i believe that big companies are doing exactly this and it won't be long until we hear that another company's done it and then another company's done it and all of a sudden you're going to hear about big companies like Microsoft and Apple and all sorts of places. And at some stage, it's going to be countries, governments that have bought into Bitcoin. That news will come out. And I did put out a tweet the other day that when the price of Bitcoin gets to a certain point where the miners don't have to sell as much, because at the moment, miners are basically selling, you know, predominantly all of their Bitcoin once they mine it, because it's, you know, there's profit there but there's not a whole lot of profit once bitcoin pushes to you know twelve thousand and twenty thousand and things like that they will have to you know they won't have to sell as much bitcoin to stay uh to meet their margins and so they will start to hold back the bitcoin uh that they have available and that's when the price is really going to skyrocket when even the miners aren't selling anymore and all the people who have bitcoin aren't selling anymore it'll become so scarce out there that that's when the price is going to start to skyrocket. And, you know, when that is, I'm not sure, but I think it's going to happen in the next sort of few months. If it's not, excuse me, the late part, the the last part, I should say, it already is the late part. The last part of this year, I think it's going to happen next year um, when we break some key levels. So again, we'll go and have a look at that shortly. Now, some interesting news for NEO. NEO, I got into NEO a little while ago and it hasn't done too bad, but it, it needs to do more if it's to succeed but it sounds like the chinese government are pretty big on neo so uh if they do well in china they're likely to do well everywhere 
But here we go. Neo Foundation teases surprising Neo 3 features, file storage and digital identity. So Neo 3 promises to provide file storage and digital identity th through the demand, uh, though the demand is questionable. So whether people are going to take up on it or not. So I found something uh, interesting here that they are basically going to go into the same thing as Filecoin uh, and, you know, offer digital, uh, what is it? Oh, God, struggling. Digital uh, file storage, that's the word I was trying to look for. Now, Filecoin, you know, pumped up like 118% and now it's dumped about 70, 80% already. So I think it's down here. Uh, yep. The market has demonstrated a decidedly mixed appetite for file storage on the blockchain. Filechain, another data storage center uh, centered product whose uh, fill token went live October 15th, rallied violently to the tune of 118% prior to an equally savage dump of nearly 80% from all time highs. So there you go. Uh, very, very quickly, it pumped right up. And I did say that the other day. But, you know, it took a long time. I think the ICO was done in 2017, 2018. And it took this long for the coins to finally make it on the market. And they pumped up very, very quickly and then dumped equally quickly. So it'll be interesting to see if this works for NEO. You know, NEO, there was a lot of hype around NEO back in sort of 2017, 2018. And obviously everything goes a little bit quiet through the the bear market and now it's going to be interesting to see if neo can uh, come out and you know live up to all the hype that it had back in 2017 2018 you know when it was ant shares and then became neo and there's been a lot of t uh, talk about neo 3 you know being the third gen uh, cryptocurrency uh, you know moving away from ethereum which was sort of what they considered gen 1 and then uh, Ethereum 2.0 is Gen 2 and Cardano I think is uh, Gen 3 and then we'll be waiting for you know the Gen 4 and things like that. So anyway, let's see if NEO can uh, you know get out there and get this happening and whether they gain the interest uh, that I'm sure they're hoping to get whether file storage is something that really takes right off and digital identity, identity that'll be you know pretty big I think in my eyes anyway people want to have that digital identity uh, going on it needs to be safe and secure and all those kind of things now we go over to here ripple so ripple survey unveils real world interest in Bitcoin ethereum XRP stable coins and CBDCs among payment executives so a new ripple survey is shedding light on the levels of interest in Bitcoin ethereum XRP stable coins and central bank digit current digital currencies among payment professionals around the world. In August and September, Ripple asked 845 executives across 22 countries, all of whom are involved in payment services at digital banks, retail banks, money transmitters, and money aggregators about their interest in digital assets. Of the group, 34% say their companies are already in production with blockchain technology for payment related use cases. 24% of respondents say they are moving into production and 21% they are running a pilot of proof of concept for blockchain tech. In addition, 40% of respondents say they are interested in Bitcoin, 25% are interested in Ethereum, and 19% are interested in XRP. Now, all of this is down from 2018, uh, when the crypto markets were in the early days of a long-term pullback. So just after the bull market, everyone was really, really excited. Then the bear market came and everyone got a little bit less excited, well, a lot less excited. And now that it seems like there's a new bull market going, and I firmly believe it is a new bull market, that interest is going to start to grow. Now, I like that uh, the numbers that came out here, uh, I think they're fairly genuine because if this is done by XRP and they only got 19%, you know, that doesn't, you know, if it came out and said, oh, you know, 87% were interested in uh, XRP and Ripple, it might have sounded a bit, yeah, just a bit fake and a bit manufactured, but yeah. This sounds about more right, 45%, 47% into Bitcoin, 25% into Ethereum, 19% into XRP, but it would have been interesting to see how many are interested uh, in the stable coins and things like that. But anyway, it shows that there is a real world interest. Now we just need to get that real world use. That's the next part. The interest is there, it's building, it's growing, and it will continue to do that, but real world use is what we need. All right, so let's go over to CoinGecko. We'll refresh this and see where it's at. All right, so we're growing. So maybe the weekend dump, 
already happened back on Thursday and Friday and we're not going to go any lower from here could still do we'll have to wait and see but 363 billion so Bitcoin 423 uh, sorry 11,423 dollars so again it's still ranging but slightly pushing up uh, a lot of green here at the moment so let's see who's the biggest movers all right ample fourth really made a move reserve token v chain uh, very nice ren made a pretty good move and just generally some nice sort of growth nothing too crazy really except for a couple here that uh, push up into the high single digits and then we've got a couple of uh, those double digit movers what about losers uh, all right, uh, OKX not doing too well. Filecoin uh, just continues to sort of travel down. But you know, if you're into Filecoin and you believe in f uh, file storage and all the rest of it, there might be a good buy price. But you know, it hasn't been out for very long to kind of know what its true world value is. Huobi down, Nest, and then again, we're just sort of single digit, you know, minuses here. So nothing too major, really. Only this, the OKX. Uh, one is a pretty big one and then you know Filecoin uh, it's not horrible but it's not great and crypto.com uh, is obviously dropping quite substantially be interesting to know what the reason for that is uh, has there been some bad news that's come out about crypto.com who knows all right let's go over and have a look at the chart so I've put in uh, my support and resistance oh, not so much support they're all sort of resistance at the moment but some key levels that we need to get through so here's this real short uh, term trend line that I had in. Now it's been negated, but I'm waiting to see if it's going to roll over and maybe bounce off this or if it just sort of continues up. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think it's going to come down and bounce off this. I think it's going to uh, trade sort of sideways for a while and it actually may come down and sort of, I think it's going to come to a roundabout possibly here if it does dip. Uh, and then just start to push higher. But this is the line that I'm looking at really. This is the uh, this is the shortest trend, uh, trend line that's been again negated. This is the shorter trend line, but this is the one that I think it's going to follow. And this is the bigger one. So this is the real uh, big bear trend market that we've been following for two years. We broke out of that. We sort of found some support off it. Uh, and now we've broken away from it. So this is the trend line that I am uh, following. Now, micro strategy, we're getting into Bitcoin throughout here. This is the period that they were doing it. Sort of roughly 8,000, I think 800, 8,900 through to about 9,200, 9,400 was their average sort of buy-in price. This is where they did it. And at the same time, micro, uh, not micro strategy, that's who was buying it. Grayscale purchased more Bitcoin at exactly the same time. So we had two big companies purchasing more Bitcoin in and around here. Then we had that big spike. Then we had a correction. But look at this trend line, it's held. And now we're bouncing off it, we've pumped up. So yes, we could come back down and possibly find some more support off it. Although I don't think we're going to. I think other big companies are currently following the micro strategy buying method. They're just buying in bit by bit, lots of small buys very, very slowly. And that is going to continue for quite some time. I don't see Bitcoin having any major corrections from here in the near future outside of there being some truly uh, bad economic news that will just ruin all markets. It won't be Bitcoin that'll just be ruined. It'll be all, you know, something like there's no vaccine or, you know, who knows what. But something really, really bad in the markets is the only thing that's going to slow this Bitcoin price down. And as I said, once we sort of get past here, whenever that is, but we might just break out and then come back down so we would not a fake out once we actually break past here and stay above here I think this line is going to be negated and the lines going to get a little bit steeper so if I use this I think this will start to move like this and then it's going to start to move a little bit like that and then we're going to go almost parabolic in an upward fashion like that so we need to break this line. It's not going to move like this. I'm just saying, you know, it'll be sort of jagged and all over the place. But once we break out of this 12,500 and we've quit, clearly broken out, then we have to test this 13,000 sort of 800. You know, we can round it off and say $14,000 level. Once we break out of there, and it's not, again, a fake out because we could break out and then have a quick uh, pullback and stay below. Once we are above here and sort of staying above here, it's going to start moving very, very fast. So I'll get rid of that line now. 
Yeah, once we get above here and it's a, you know, a confirmed breakout, things are going to start to move very, very fast. So we got to move this up a little bit. All right, there, yeah, that's roughly where we're at. So 19,600. So again, once we get above 12,500, things are going to start to move fairly quickly but they are going to start to move really quickly once we break out above this. Because after this, there's no real kind of confluence here. There's bits and pieces of resistance and whatnot, but I think we'll move up to here pretty quickly. I think we'll probably get a somewhat hard rejection uh, from this uh, point, but I could be wrong. I, we could just pump straight through it and just keep going. But this is the resistance that we're looking for. Once we break that $13,800, $14,000 mark, things are going to move very, very, very quickly. There's going to be a number of institutions that are going to pile in and they're going to pile in big dollars and then retail is going to FOMO and they're going to be trying to get on board and all the rest of it. So this is really the key level I'm looking for. Once this breaks and it's not a fake out that we don't break out above and then fall back below because that's quite possible that we do that. But once we have a confirmed breakout from here and a pullback that doesn't go below and then we start to move up again, it's going to be fast, ladies and gentlemen. The markets are going to move very, very, very quickly. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether, you know, these prolonged uh, market cycles that people have talked about happen because it could be a shorter one. There is a chance that maybe the, mar the, market, the market cycle gets shorter because of the amount of interest that moves in. It could be a really, really, you know, I don't want to say super quick, but a quick pump to get up to 100,000 and then maybe beyond 100,000. And then really after sort of that $100,000 mark, there will be people that will be starting to sell uh, and cash out. And particularly that $100,000 mark in itself, I think that will be a, a barrier to cross. I'm not saying Bitcoin can't do it. I just, I'm unsure about whether we're just going to smash straight through it and just keep going and everyone's still jumping on the bandwagon or companies like Micro strategy um, grayscale and things like that are starting to you know sell out of some of their position in Bitcoin but again if interest rates are really really horrible at that time when Bitcoin is at a hundred thousand you know ie their negative interest rates you know why would you sell because then you've got this cash uh, that's just going to be eaten away. There'd have to be another asset that they'd be looking to put it into. And what that asset may be, I don't know. And again, if it's really just absolutely screaming through $100,000, then, you know, people would start probably thinking, all right, well, let's see how 150 goes and let's see how 200 goes and let's see how 300 goes, you know, before people start to sell. So be interesting times ahead. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. There's definitely a couple of gains out there. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.